How many remember A-Life? Founded in 1999, A-Life is a streetwear and culture brand, also a retailer of men's clothing, sneakers, footwear, and art, based out of New York City. A-Life prides itself on being a multitasking, multifaceted, lifestyle-driven company. Well known for its cultural work, branded products, experimental retail concepts, art exhibitions, top-tier co-branding collaborations, and live music events. A-Life was one of the first streetwear brands to gain footing back in the early days of the industry. But over the years, they're not quite the players that they used to be. And in this video, we'll discuss the history of A-Life, how they started, became prominent, and eventually fell from the platform from which they once sat. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com. And before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps us grow and spread our reach to a larger audience. Also, if you're a fan of streetwear culture and want to be updated whenever we drop another video just like this one, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be reminded every time we drop a new video. So with that being said, let's jump right in. A-Life was a project created by Rob Cristofaro, Ardenon Della Croli, Tony Arcabasio, and Tammy Brainerd. It was created to fill a void of creativity in New York at the time and share a very niche, creative lifestyle with a broader audience. They came across the name while looking through an old Lenny Kravitz album. Although artificial life had proven to be too long for the various applications they were being faced with, they came up with a shortened version and just called it A-Life. A-Life, they believed, was a description of the top of the food chain in terms of anything it touched. They were four individuals with specific specialties forming Voltron to make things happen. They all had a similar goal, dedicated to building what they believed in. A-Life spawned into a clothing brand, but originally it started as a creative workshop. The primary motive for starting the company was to spread their love of product, art, lifestyle and quality to whomever wanted to come along for the ride. Eventually, the crew branched out in the streetwear scene, opening up one of New York's first high-profile sneaker boutiques, the A-Life Rivington Club. Trying to create a unique selling point is something that most brands struggle with, but this is something that A-Life achieves simply by surrounding the brand with things that they, being the founders, loved themselves. There was a calling for the brand worldwide, and following the opening of the now-renowned Rivington Club Sneaker Boutique, the first of its kind, mind you, in New York City in 2001, came the brand's expansion outside the U.S., when in 2005 they opened the Canadian flagship store in Vancouver. Further spaces would follow in key cities that included L.A. in 2007 and Tokyo in 2008. But it would be from the iconic New York location that the label would drop collaborations with Nike, Puma, Reebok, Adidas, and many more. Such collaborations soon started to attract around the block lines and a type of fanfare that has become a pillar of the modern sneaker culture. A-Life's Reebok Court Victory Pump Ball Out is one of the drops that helped A-Life build a modern sneaker culture that we enjoy today. The original release dropped on Black Friday to unprecedented height becoming an instant sellout. The shoe was created with Tennis Star and youngest athlete to ever win a Grand Slam on the pro tennis circuit at just age 17, Michael Chang in mind. To reference Chang's tennis career, A-Life covered the upper in a fuzzy material meant to resemble a tennis ball. In 2008, they would work on the A-Life Rivington Club Adidas ZX7000. Still highly sought after to this day on the aftermarket sites like StockX, this take on the ZX7000 sees the silhouette dressed in a moody mix of University Red, Cardinal, and Toro, which tones down the usually busy upper of the ZX7000, giving the sneaker the coolest makeover it's ever had. 2009 would see them work on one of the most beloved collections to come out of A-Life's Rivington Club sneaker store, the triple pack of New Balance 1300s, which featured reflective mesh construction with a suede accent dressed in all gray, white, or teal colorway. The original release dropped at midnight, setting a new precedent for the lengths that people would go to just to cop a pair of sneakers that they wanted in the colorway of their choice. Also that year, 
they will show the Air Force One the respect it truly deserves. This iteration of the Air Force One is dressed in a premium all-white leather upper with an embossed all-over print of stars across both the upper and midsole and sits atop a clean gum sole. And personally, being someone that's long been tired of the classic all-white Air Force One design, I still to this day think that these are crazy and will wear them, no problem. In addition to doing many dope brand collaborations, A-Life also has a few eye-catching silhouettes of their own, one of which being the Everybody High Skate Shoe, which never looked cooler than when it was designed with Barney's New York. Dropped in three colorways of burgundy, mustard, or gray, each pair in this collection is equipped with matching laces and sits atop a blue midsole with dual A-Life and Barney's branding. A-Life were pioneers in treating a sneaker like luxury items, and it would be collaborations like this that would later really help out when it came to elevating a sneaker in high fashion circles. In 2010, A-Life linked up with Philadelphia-based pro skater Stevie Williams and cooked up this Everybody High which features a Phillies-inspired colorway over tough performance-focused mesh and suede construction. The A-Life influence grew to encompass footwear with Rift by A-Life NYC and a creative agency known as A-Life Creative. A-Life's creative department was a huge draw to the brand and saw them provide creative direction for big name magazines as well as collaborations with the likes of Adidas, Canada Goose, and most notably Levi's in 2004 in which they created a temporary retail installation to celebrate the classic Levi's 501 shape. They would also release their own branded clothing which gained respect among the elite streetwear brands of the day. As keeping with tradition of the brand, A-Life looked to further develop a role with the community and from 2006 onward began to sponsor events that would allow those who followed A-Life to become further immersed in its culture. Known as the A-Life Sessions, the events have been taken to many different cities and received great receptions, showcasing the talent of some of the biggest names in music. Over the years, A-Life would thrive and revolutionize the way large sneaker brands marketed their products. However, sometime around 2016 or so, the brand began to lose a little bit of steam. They would, however, release the Reebok Classic Phase 1 and Sacconi Jazz 91 that year, but it seemed to not be as much buzz around them as it once was before. After a three-way collab in 2017 with StarCow and Adidas Consortium, A-Life kind of went quiet for a bit. They would bounce back later that year with the release of A-Life New York's Crocs. This wasn't the first time that they released a deal with Crocs as they had been in business with them since 2018, but the 2020 version was no less insane. But shockingly, recently news has released that the famed Rivington Club location in New York City would be closing. As of making this video, news is pretty sparse, with no real reason being given by A-Life's general manager Therese Hill in a recent Instagram post. Quote, it was more than just a retail store. It was a meeting ground for downtown youth, Hill would reflect in the statement. There isn't a person of influence in streetwear today that hasn't stepped foot into the shop, Hill said. It was more than just a retail store. It was a meeting ground for downtown's youth. It played host to countless live concerts from Drake, Nas, John Mayer, King Kroll, and more. It raised the generation of creatives, end quote. The closure of the NY shop is very sad when you think about it. A-Life has made so much history from that location, and its entire ethos is built around the downtown New York vibe. The downfall of A-Life, if you even really want to call it that, is a bit different from many of the other videos. Many of the other brands that we've covered, or will cover, fell off because they lost footing in the industry. A-Life is different because although they did have a clothing presence, most of the hype they built was surrounded through their sneaker collapse. And although they did not release official info on why the store closed, we can really only speculate. And my best guess is because of the situation in New York these days. However you feel about the pandemic, one thing you have to admit, New York has been a very tough place to do business lately. 
with all of the shutdowns that they had last year and quote feelings on people's medical history it's not a conducive setup for the type of social environment that the rivington club location was i'm sure it's pretty difficult to do the same type of shows that they have put on in the past in this present day new york environment not to mention about a year and a half of not being able to do business at all from the shop the rise and fall of a life at the end of the day is not quite that with the collab crazy consumers that we talk so much about these days, there's always a home for streetwear brand mashups. And A-Life has pledged to not only remain alive via online, but to reopen a new location at a date to be determined. I personally think they can stick around in this fashion. They've been responsible for some really nice collabs in the past. Plus, they are one of the progenitors of the whole streetwear by sneaker brand collabs. So I think they got a place in the industry, in my opinion. All they have to do is drop another insane sneaker colorway and they should be good. But the store closing, however, is a whole nother issue. So, what do you think about A-Life? Are you still a fan? Would you cop it today if they released another sneaker collaboration? Hit us up in the comment section. I do regularly check and respond to all of the comments left. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video that we produced for you today. And if you want to be updated every time we drop another video just like this one, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out until next time. Peace.